wanted to hop on here to display a uh, recent project that I just finished up or am in the midst of uh, putting the final touches on. This is an ASCII paper tape reader. Um, it is a medium of storage that is circa 50s, 1950s to the 1970s before magnetic uh, storage became uh, more prol prol proliferated such as uh, floppy disks in the late 70s. But you would see such a media as this um, operating even on scientific computers probably you know into the early 80s while they were doing the trans transition into um, more available magnetic media. Um, anyways this project is based on um, a user I found on GitHub named David Hansel and I have learned since that he is heavily involved in the Altair Duino emulation project which is basically like an Altair 8800 uh, front panel that operates in a cycle exact way uh, to the Altair 8800. So that's interesting. And it would make sense that he would come up with something like this because, uh, yeah, that was the main way most people programmed that computer um, because it was the cheapest uh, medium available at the time. This is a 8-bit um, ASCII machine with um, one index hole. The, it follows the standard that I'm placing on the screen right now. And uh, I did want to keep it in that standard in case I ever ran into um, another type of reader or wanted to write code for another machine that I might come in, into possession of that is uh, from that era. But um, regardless, this machine took me about a month to build. Um, the original creator, uh, David Hansel, he um, had it in a much more rudimentary form, albeit extremely functional, and uh, his works uh, with very high rate of read and, and accuracy. But um, I would have access to laser cutters and 3D printers, so I wanted to be able to leverage those tools and then to make something a little bit more, um, a little bit more aesthetically um, paralleled to the existing microcomputer that I have built. Um, that is the Coleman Z80 microcomputer, and I've detailed that build here on the channel uh, to great extent. So if you're interested in that, please check out the video. Um, but yeah, that is actually one of the most um, challenging parts of this build was the physicality of the device. It's quite interesting how elegant and simple the logic that controls the machine is and the reader head apparatus which is uses um, infrared LEDs with uh, their you know their matching infrared receiver in order to uh, perceive the data bits that are in parallel and it serializes that with a microcontroller and offers um, a significant amount of settings via an I2C um, LCD screen that is available for you know certain parameters that need changing like baud rates or character per second delay, things like that. So I do invite you to check out this project. It was extremely elegant and um, very interesting way to achieve this in the modern realm. I also had to create a um, Python program that made the tape because paper tape punches, if they can be found at all, are often in a great state of disrepair or they're really expensive. Um, the cheapest one I found on eBay was $700 and it just goes up from there. So with access to a laser cutter, I um, created a Python program that leverages the svgwrite function um, in order to create my own and uh, it's probably more arduous and way more slow than um, an actual dedicated paper tape punch. But it's 2025 and those things are becoming extremely hard to uh, come by. I also iterated a lot on the uh, reel because that, again, is part of the physicality of the machine, the physical logistics of getting this to work. Um, so these are a lot of the uh, iterations before I landed on the final one. I, everything from you know how it spools on to how it interfaces with the 
axle, that, uh, this is a static axle, but this is the drive axle. And in general, the iterations were necessary to get to where we are now. And currently I'm getting, uh, you know, 99, 100% um, accurate readbacks. Uh, just really depends on um, sometimes even light conditions. I think I'm going to work on shading this better because sunlight is, uh, you know, full of infrared itself. And sometimes I feel like I get better uh, accurate results if I'm in a, a non-naturally lit room or if this is shielded better. Um, but we're going to work on that. That's uh, future iteration. So we're looking around the rear of the machine now and ultimately it gives a little insight into how this machine is to be interfaced with a microcomputer. Um, the design is um, so ex it exists so that you can put it between your um, existing terminal and the microcomputer you're seeking to um, communicate with. So there's a relay inside that if you're transmitting via this device, it takes over the serial line and sends to the computer. And if you're not, it defaults to the terminal. So it's kind of like a pass through that occurs there. The DB9 connection is the serial out that's highlighted and it uses 3.3 volt levels. Um, I put some infographic on the back to show how it is to um, exist between the, the teletype on the right and the microcomputer on the left. Um, this machine can operate on either 120 or 240 volts at 50 or 60 hertz and that is because on the inside, on the left here, we'll see a standard 12 volt power supply uh, at 4 amps. Um, I have the 4 amps because the motor I chose happens to um, have quite a bit of current draw uh, upon startup so I wanted to have a little overhead. Um, I also put an ammeter in the front because I thought that was attractive and it also just gives good insight into how much current the motor is drawing. Uh, next little box over is the axle drive unit which was created in Fusion 360 along with all the other fittings and parts that are custom was uh, all made in Fusion 360. Um, it's belt driven and it operates uh, the drive unit there on the left and the pulleys were made in open SCAD um, with a customizable parametric um, pulley file that I found on Thingiverse that allowed me to uh, create custom pulleys. Uh, the next box over is the logic board and the connections and that is the board that is designed by David Hansel. Um, I used uh, Quick Connects in order to uh, make all the interfaces to the reader head and various other um, parts of the system and on the far right is the static axle and that doesn't do anything except stay still. And then if we take a look on the front um, it's got the um, places for the reels to exist, uh, the reader head and it's got two adjustable um, turning screws that can bring the reader head either forward or backwards to align the holes more accurately. You'll see the ammeter that has been used. There's also a cutout hole for the um, LCD screen which shows the parameters as designed by uh, David Hansel's uh, firmware for the device. I used my um, Mini Pro uh, to flash the microcontroller with the firmware as provided from the GitHub. And other than that, we have a TX light that turns on when the machine is indeed transmitting. And we have a power uh, switch. I also, you know, leveraged the um, Inkscape software for SVGs in order to make it more aesthetically pleasing and informative on the front. So we have a little arrow that indicates which direction the tape is supposed to go. And uh, I gave it a nice little graphic for the title of the machine.
Okay, and that's it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. This is a really fun project to build. I love this era of um, computing. I think it is so unique the way that we've, got, we've gotten here by standing on the shoulders of things like this. Um, I'm very uh, grateful to have access to these tools such as a laser cutter and a 3D printer. And um, also, you know, just it's fun for me to be able to suit kind of an aesthetic era that you could say uh, this era of computing was full of aesthetic computing. And, you know, it goes, I, I love the idea of tube computers too, and um, everything now fits in a kind of integrated chip smaller than your pinky nail, and that's fun. But there's nothing like seeing it like this. So anyways, that's my uh, waxing poetic for a moment. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I uh, hope to see you in the next video.